So I want to talk about Sartre. Now, I've obviously haven't been here this morning, but Sartre is for me at least one of the critical points at which the complexity and problems of cannabis regulation and licensing occurs in this country right now. I don't have the answers about what Sartre does or is any more than anyone else does because I, I can't figure it out that well. But I can, however, read kind of, and I can take from the amendments uh, to the NCC and or well, the um, Control Council bill. These were the amendments that they put in place to introduce Sartre. Now, you know, Parliament is up to something dodgy when essentially it gets passed very quietly. Does anyone remember when Sartre got passed? It just, it just happened. You know Parliament's up to something dodgy when that happens because it's always, every time there's a very quiet piece of legislation put through it, it's always dodgy. So, the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority hereby establishes an organ of state within the public administration but outside the public service. What does that mean? So, established as an organ of state, which means it has regulatory power because it's an organ of state, but outside of the public service. What's outside of the public service in terms of law? The private. This is a company, but a company with the authority of state. So now if you have an organ of government which is for all intents and purposes and functioning a company that is profit driven but has the, the regulatory power of government at state, you have a, potentially it's a very big problem because you suddenly have a profit driven organization that has the power to enforce its own structures and dynamics to generate more income. Uh, and this is sort of, there's sort of a little telltale to this that hints at why this, well, why this is true at least. So, a member of the board excluding members, blah, 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 with the concurrence of the Minister of Finance. What does the Minister of Finance have to do with the regulation of medicines and health things? I mean, if this was just about health and medicine, what does the Minister of Finance have to do with this? Does the South African state make medicine? At a broad scale, does it have, is it like Cipra or someone? Or Merck? No. So why does the Minister of Finance have to be involved? Unless, of course, it is actually a profit-driven thing, and the Minister of Finance has something to do with this, because this is a, this is a grand little stream of, of income in a country where tax compliance is quite low, among other things. Of course, it makes a problem, there's the problem on the other side as well. So I know you establish yourself, you know, you come to this country and you've got a product Let's call it heroin. Okay, well just for argument's sake. And you give it to the people in Sartre and they do tests and they discover this stuff is quite addictive and probably quite problematic to, you know, like disseminate. So we're going to make it Schedule 8. But you say, hang on. Schedule 8 is going to limit my distribution. Because I can't distribute, in other words. Unless it's, you know, like through dodgy channels. I want to schedule to read. Well, how, is, how, is it going to, how can we make that happen? Well, we can make that happen because if Sartre is a profit-driven country company and we are a big farmer who happens to have a lot of money, well, we can afford to do that. So what, you, what occurs essentially is that health concerns and medical concerns become subject to the licensing frameworks that are established purely on affordability or <laughs> on expense, which means, and it hasn't happened yet, I do put that, I want to put that caveat in, but it's the potential legally is there for people who may not have the best interests of other people in mind, but may have the best interests of profit in mind, to fundamentally influence the process by which licensing and scheduling occurs to such an extent that things that are dangerous may be scheduled at lower levels. And vice versa, think of cannabis, for instance, that doesn't have the money, but has the potential to do good can't get their thing scheduled at the right level. So you end up with cannabis being remaining, you know, so I mean, yes, you can have your private consumption, but anything commercial is scheduled five, six, maybe four if you're lucky, because you don't have the money to influence that decision, well, then you just undermine a whole lot of good that could come out of cannabis. Now, I'm not saying it's happened, but I'm not saying it's not going to happen either. I mean, I don't want to be skeptical of government, but um, <laughs> history, history, history uh, leads me to want to be skeptical. So there's a lot of there's a lot of confusion around software. I mean, these are just the big picture. There's a lot of legal confusion. There's a lot of regulatory confusion. There's a lot of access confusion, and I don't have the answers to how this is going to be sorted out. But I do question why did we change from the MCC in the first place? 
Medical Control Council was run by doctors. Why did we need software? I don't know. No one listens to me anyway. So. 